Let's go, champ. Gamble, gamble. You lose everything. <laughs> Is it back from working? Here in Malta, the quest for the throne has already begun. I gotta spin my stack up today. I've got peace to feed. Kings have been toppled. Any kings about? Get it in with kings versus aces. Bloody marvellous. Can't make up. There we go. Sick. No, 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 The battlefield is littered with defeated champions. Yeah, like it's it. so embarrassing. I busted day one in five minutes. <laughs> I'll be back. The Pokestars.com EPT is looking for a new ruler. And six challengers are heading to the final table in search of poker glory. Hello once again, welcome to Malta and the European Poker Tour. I'm James Hartigan, alongside Joe Stapleton. You know the drinks are so cheap on this island, it's a miracle I made it here at all today. Well, you're not the only one lucky to be here. Just six players remain in the tournament. It's a new cast of characters coming to the stage, with most of the 2.3 million euro prize pool still up for grabs. It's time to close out this short season of the EPT with the Malta main event. Drinks on him. Coming into play as chip leader is an amateur who spent the last five days confounding the pros. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Already? Yeah. Sorry. That's sorry. He's such a nice guy. Mats Carlsen is a retired Swede living in Malta. Well, of course, I have the image of a fish. Old guy, a bit, you know, flustered and, you know, nervous. To some, some extent, it is to my advantage, of course. Well, everybody loves an underdog story, and this final table has three tales to tell. Peter Ockenden from the UK is an online qualifier looking to spin it up. Oh, I'm here for 27 euros, so how can I feel any pressure? Poker really is just something that I do as a hobby. But, you know, coming here to final table and cashing so well, that's a dream come true. Ali Saad is another businessman living the dream. Here in Malta on holiday, he extended his trip to play the main event. I'm not a professional player. I came with uh, my wife and five kids. She go back to Lebanon to the kids and... Uh, I uh, continue the tournament. I love this, uh, this position. But the narrative could be dictated by the pros, with three of the game's brightest online talents at this final table. Dmitry Yurasov is a high-stakes player. He's second in chips and is looking to capitalize on the others in experience. I think I'm going to play quite aggressively, because the opponents are, in principle, passive. But I expect to win. British pro Thomas McNamara has already come close to an EPT title this year in Dublin. McNamara out and unlucky 13th. And when we went seven-handed, it looked like he was destined for disappointment again. Three-way all-in, baby. Well, there is a jack and an eight on the flop. That will do it. That's nuts! I was incredibly lucky. I never really expected to come this far. It'd be great to win. Like, to be honest, the money wouldn't be life-changing, but certainly have a good time with it, yeah. Alexei Boyka from Belarus was on the receiving end of that beat, leaving him trailing the pack as the short stack. I couldn't do anything else. It was a big cooler hand. I don't really expect it, but if I'm going to win the title, I will be incredibly happy. It's the final chapter. Three amateurs versus three pros. How will the story end? Well, this is one of the last chances to win an EPT title. We're getting cards in the air at the final table of the Malta main event. Blinds a 25-50 with a 5K ante. You know, George, R. R. Martin whispered the end of this tournament to me just in case he dies before he's done writing it. Action here on Peter Ockenden. He folds. Mayasov, Yurasov. Folded around to Thomas McNamara, who has ace king of spades on the button. He raises to 110,000. Jacks for Alexei Boyker in the small blind. Looks like we're going to be kicking things off with a flip. 
It looks like he's re-raising. It's a three bet to 260,000. Mats Carlson folds the big blind. It's back on McNamara. Man, this is just a cooler at this stage. It takes skill to get to this point, but at moments like these, you gotta just get it in and hope for the best. Kinda like voting. I'm all in. A shove. And a call. Boyka at risk, but a marginal favorite. Like Jon Snow versus Tyrion Lannister, one of these two hands has a slight mathematical advantage. Russian pro Roman Koronev is railing Alexei Boyka. He is flipping for his tournament life. The flop. Is King High. McNamara takes the lead. Boyka's still smiling. Oh, no, there it goes. Queen on the turn. Close, it's close. Additional outs for Boyka. One time. He needs a 10 or a jack on the river to survive. 10 ball! Yeah, it was a flip, but what a dramatic and brutal way for the jacks to re get there. McNamara loses a hefty chunk of his chips, and Boyka jumps from being the short stack to third on the leaderboard. Hey, you think Roman got those glasses at Carl from Ups estate sale? He's like a Russian Sam Grafton. <laughs> so everyone's locked up 77K. There are six-figure scores for the final five, with the winner receiving nearly 356,000 euros. Well, funnily enough, Thomas McNamara is now the short stack, and he's first to speak here. He has ace-8. Ace-8 under the gun's not great, but since he's shorter than Tyrion's time in King's Landing, he's probably going to put it in. There's the shove. Boyka folds. Carlson's out. Peter Ockenden on the button. Has pocket sixes. This is probably a call. McNamara's going to be shoving all of his smaller pairs and probably not his monsters like queens or better. Ockenden is a businessman who divides his time between the UK and the Netherlands. Fun. He calls, putting McNamara at risk. Yurasov <laughs> folds. Saad. There's king four in the big. Not aces, sadly. He lets it go. Cards on their backs. We have another coin flip. Love money. Flip here. McNamara, the player at risk. Two flips in a row. I mean, if you lose the first one, you're guaranteed to win the second, right? Queen, jack, seven on the flop. McNamara looking for an ace or an eight. At least if he does lose this one, it'll be less dramatically. Of course, he'll be out. A turn card. Another queen. Or else. Ockenden's now in danger of being counterfeited. Seven, eight, jacks and aces all working for McNamara. But it's another queen. More like Mac no Mora. He's out in sixth place. That's okay with you. Good luck. Good luck. That's mate. That's luck. <clears throat> McNamara, can we go thrift shopping? Good luck, Max. Ockenden now at 2.7 million. While McNamara cashes for 76,790 euros. Well, Matt Carlson still leads with a stack of more than 3.8 million. With McNamara gone, Ellie Saad is now the low man at the table. Peter Ockenden has moved into third place. Dark Ark. Well, the action is on, Peter. The online qualifier has King Queen in the cutoff. Queen, yes. Touch the Queen. Touch it. Okay. Here comes the raise. 130,000. Hail to the queen, baby. Folded to Ali Saad in the small blind. 6-3 off. A uh, bye-bye. Yeah, that goes in the muck. Alexei Boyka is in the big blind. He has King-8 of diamonds. With stack sizes, this is definitely a defend with King-8 suited. He makes the call. 
and we go to the flop. Which gives Ockenden top pair diamond draw for Boyka. Top pair versus a flush draw, that old classic battle. Action check to Ockenden. He continues for 240,000. Just look at all those diamonds. He ain't going nowhere. Hey, remember when you first started playing poker and you get mad at people for chasing flushes? <laughs> Two forty. Boyka calls, and we go to the turn. Oh, keep chasing those flushes, you fish! It's a ten, so both players pick up a straight draw now. Arkenden's still ahead, a three to one favorite with top pair. Action check to him a second time, and he will bet a second time. That is three hundred eighty-five thousand. By the way, chasing flush draws like Alexei Boyka is about to do is totally fine. In fact, not chasing this flush draw would make him a bad player. He calls. The pot's nearly 1.6 million. We're going to the river. And that river card is the Ten of Diamonds. Flush for Boyka. And I really like a lead here. There we go. The question is how much? Well, that's roughly one third pot, 450,000. There aren't a lot of hands Ockenden could bet on the river, but there are plenty he could call with, including this hand. Ockenden calls. More like Alexi Binka. That's two rivers so far. That's it. Boyka came into this final table as the short stack, and he is now second in chips. From worst to almost first. That's clunky. Hi, babies. Want to listen to more of my jokes and embarrassing stories without poker getting in the way? Subscribe to EGT Not Live on iTunes or download it from soundcloud.com slash EGT Not Live. There's guests, competitions, online dating. You can even get some behind-the-scenes gossip on the show you're watching right now. That's right, more layers than an advanced Rubik's Cube, which has two layers. More layers than that. EGT Not Live. We're witnessing an incredible comeback story here at the Pokestars.com EPT Malta main event, with start of day short stack Alexi Boyka now challenging for the chip lead. I just was ready to go and pack my stuff to go to the airport, but I got really lucky on the river. In the next five hours I have a flight to Moscow, so maybe it's gonna be postponed. Certainly hope that it's gonna be like that. So Boyka is not that far behind the amateur player Mats Carlsen and just ahead of his friend, fellow pro Dmitry Yurasov. Peter Ockenden is now the short stack and he's just folded. Dmitry Yurasov has Queen 10 in the cutoff. No, Yurasov! Sorry, it throws me every time. It's a raise to 110,000. A fold from Elisard and from Alexei Boyka. Okay, we are going to get to see the chip leader play a hand as Mats Carlsen calls out of the big blind with Jack-7. Totally fine. And Carlsen flops best. Second pair. I think when Yurasov talks about the passive play at this table, he's mostly talking about Carlsen. Well, Carlsen has checked. Yurasov C-bets, 150,000. In this case, passive is the only way to play it. Go Carlson calls with the best hand. The turn card is a jack. Two pair for Carlson. Yurasov now with an open-ended straight draw. Man, I love Carlson. He's been accidentally working these pros like Bill Murray and the man who knew too little. Yurasov fires again, 360,000. And he always seems super stressed out.
Carlson. Well, whoops, race. Nailed it. He's made 800k. <laughs> it's amazing. This raise is probably a little too small. Calling's fine, but if he raises, it should be a little bigger so he can get it in on the river. Well, Yurasov calls with his draw. And Yurasov catches a piece on the river, but it's not enough. Two point one seven million in the middle. Carlson will lead river for five hundred and fifty K. Again, I'd like to see this bet a little bigger. He has given Urasov an awesome price for the hand he's actually got. And Urasov's in a weird spot because it's like, I just spiked top pair, yay. But then it's like, is Carlson ever check raising the turn super small as a bluff? Boo, probably not. Will he pay off this value bet? Yes. Okay. So stressed out. Mats Carlson takes a big pot off Dmitry Yurasov and increases his chip lead. Where's your aggression now, Dmitry? Yeah. Sorry, I'm nervous. Mats Carlson is so nervous. That's not even gum. These guys know what I'm talking about. Some of Mats's friends who are thrilled he now has close to six million chips. As the blinds go to 30-60 with a 10k ante. Action on Boyka. He folds. Carlson in the cutoff has Jack 10. Get him, Matt. He raises to 130,000. Ace 9 for Ockenden. On the button. He calls. That's a little loose, even in position. I'd have rather seen a 3 bat. Ali Saad in the big blind. Gives it up. So heads up to the flop. Let the stressing begin. Well, Peter Ockenden is the effective stack here with roughly 20 bigs behind. Well, that flop gives Ockenden top pair. Carlson is up and down. It's literally 50-50. Carlson continues for 200,000. 550. Ockenden raises. Well, I know how this hand should go. I'm all in. Carlson shoves, and Ockenden can't fold, can he? I don't think he's actually thinking about this. I think he's just taking his time. I hope. Okay. Boom. I have out anyway. Ace nine. It's a race. It is a true statistical dead heat. Yeah, it's probably about the only hand I didn't want to see. How about a set of eights? Nines, threes, eight, nine. Carlson has 14 outs. He can hit a seven, ten, jack, or queen to bust Peter Ockenden. Ten on the turn, leaving Ockenden with five outs. An ace or a nine needed. The river is a king. We're down to four. Oh, yes. It's good luck, guys. In for 27 euros, out for almost 400 times that. But I have, you know, almost 50% there. Eh? Yeah. More or less. Peter Ogden cashes for more than 104,000 euros. Dispatched by the table boss. I'm Mats Carlson. I'm 58. I live in Malta since 11 or 12 years. And uh, I'm retired. I think this is only my second EPT. I played last year in Malta and went out the first day. So this is the first cast. I think the other players can't really figure me out. Because I'm old and I'm local. I think they look at me as a fish, and it's great. I do, I do nothing to change that. I'm not that bad, I mean, I can't compete at this level. But I like to play against good players here, yeah? and I love having Dominic Panka or Ole Chemian at my table.
Of course, I'm the big target immediately, yeah? And I realized that. I'm starting to get nervous. That's why I sort of played back at him. I was very lucky on two different occasions against him. And the next day, I, <laughs> I knocked him out with a three out there. Yeah? What can you say? <laughs> I mean, most of the kids weren't born when I started to play. But uh, I would say that poker is probably a young man's game, actually, because they, they have more, more stamina and uh, the brains are sharper, yeah. But I don't think I take a loss as seriously as some, some of the younger kids. But, you know, winning the, the title would be <laughs> amazing, yeah. You know what an older guy's got that young kids don't? A lifetime of experience and a pocket full of sour candies. Well, let's see if Mats confounds us as we sweat with Dmitry Urasov in the big blind. Mats is completed in the small. Urasov has 6-4 in the big. He checks his option. OK. The flop is 8-6 deuce, second pair for Dmitry. Carlson's betting. 125,000. We got a pair. We can call once, try to improve. Although, if he's betting, I tend to think we're probably already losing. Urasov calls. The turn card is a nine. Well, that's another overcard to Urasov's pair. And Carlson is betting again. Wow, that's pretty much full pop. Yeah, I kind of think this is a fold. I don't see the point in getting too hero-y against the guys probably playing more straightforward than a drag race. Wow, he's calling. Or, you know, we could just call and try to do what all a Shemian and Dominic Panka couldn't do, which is try to outplay a guy who's getting hit in the face with a deck. Queen on the river. So now the board gets straightier. And Carlson's going to fire a third barrel. 600,000. Oh, man. Fold. Fold! Fold it like a slice of real Brooklyn pizza. He's really thinking about heroing here. Do not do it. Yourself calls. Two, two pairs. Queen eight. Adi, adi, adi. <laughs> when you're hot, you're hot. Carlson, so hot right now. To be fair, one pair was enough. Mats Carlson continues to crush. Meanwhile, both Dmitry Urasov and Eli Saad are now in the danger zone. Danger zone! Well, action's been folded to Saad. On the button. King Jack. He is all in. Boyka's got tens. Flip City. Call. Carlson in the big. Passes, so we're off to the races again. Like GIFs versus Bitmojis, one of these hands has a slight mathematical advantage. Saad is at risk and needs to hit. Good luck. Thank you. Check out the Saad squad. Looking for a king or a jack. And he hits a king on the flop. Saad takes the lead. Boyka drawing to two outs. He's been in some dicey situations before. Saad set for the double up. A three on the turn. So Saad just has to fade a 10 on the river. Oh no! Yeah. 
so sick. Ouch. Good game. Nice to play with you. Yeah. Ellie Saad out in fourth. He wins nearly 142,000 euros. And that is twice that Alexei Boyka has hit a 10 on the river. Nobody knows what it's like to be the Saad man. Meanwhile, an amazing moment for Alexei Boyka. And if you'd like to experience the excitement of the tour, you can qualify for a main event at PokerStars.com. Welcome back to the PokerStars.com EPT Malta, where currently the two online pros trail the local amateur at the main event final table. So I squeezed between the Russians. Hmm? I'm a squeezed between the Russians now. Yeah. But one of you is Belarus. Yeah, we both live in Belarus. Bela both Belarus, okay. Which explains why they want to make Minsk meat out of you. Admit it. You had to look up the capital of Belarus. <laughs> Action on Boyka, on the button. He's got his favorite hand, pocket tens. And he raises to 150,000. Well, Yurasov has fewer than 20 bigs. King 10. All in. Call. Shove and a call. Boyka puts his friend at risk. That was a risky shove with King 10. Boyka's a two to one favorite to bust Yurasov here. But there's a king on the flop. Trigger сложнее будет поймать. I think they're joking about how Mads Carlson is probably going to win the whole thing. Six on the turn. Well, we have seen Boyka pull a two outer with tens. What about a one outer? No. Not this time. Yurasov doubles up. Man, you know your luck's run out in poker when you just can't hit your one outers anymore. Can you sit still for one second? Just gotta get a picture of this for my suck out album. Got it. <laughs> so Carlson's still dominating, and not much separating Boyka and Yurasov as the blinds increase to 40,000, 80,000, and he stays at 10,000. Forward to Boyka in the small blind. He's got aces. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. He raises to 220,000. Mats Carlson has 10 nine of hearts in the big. So how's he gonna get them? Straight, two pair, hearts, all of the above? Carlson defends. The flop is king, queen, seven. Boyka still a huge favorite. Carlson with nothing more than a gut shot on a backdoor heart draw. Yeah, that's something. Boyka continues, 200k. Calling once seems okay. Taking us to the turn. It's just two chips. It's an eight. So Carlson's now open-ended. Boyka, better than a four-to-one favorite. He's betting again. 870,000 in the middle. He makes it 575,000. He might want to consider folding now. I call. Nope. We're going to the river. Boyka with less than a pot size bet behind. And he improves to top set. Meanwhile, the board is bricked out for Carson. A value bet of 575,000. Seems fairly obvious. Carlson lets it go. He really is quite adorable. Boyka adds a million to his stack and closes the gap between him and the chip leader. My name is Alex. I'm from Belarus and I'm 28 years old. Seven years ago, 
I was a student in economics, which uh, didn't come to life because I invested more and more time in poker. I mostly play online. My biggest result was uh, winning a summer championship of online poker. From time to time, it's really nice to play live poker. Uh, just one table, picking some reads from your opponents. First time I was here, like six or seven years ago, it was actually my first live series in my life. But I didn't really succeed. Now it's really fantastic because I had less than 10% of the chips, so if I'm gonna win the title, I will be incredibly happy. Alexei's concerned if he wins, he might miss his flight to Moscow. All I can say is, you're welcome. Well, action's on, Boyka. I do the wrong colors all the time, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. Wrong color, again. It's cheaper that way. We've all done it. No discount for you, Matt Carlson. Unless we're talking about the early bird special. Boyka calls in the small with Queen-10. Carlson, with five deuce in the big, checks his option. And Carlson flops best, bottom pair. Classic Carlson. Boyka bets 100k. Most of the time, Carlson will have missed. Not this time. So he calls. Turn card is an eight. So both players now have a straight draw. Carlson's is no good. But he's still ahead for now with deuces. And he's facing a bet of 250,000 from Boyka. Perfectly reasonable spot for Boyka to keep betting. Carlson calls again. Last well, six on the river gives both players a straight. Carlson with a straight to the nine. Boyka with a straight to the ten. 890,000 in the middle. And it's beer time for Carlson. Oh, he's definitely calling this river. <laughs> what is going on? Time for some gum. Um. Here comes the value bet from Boyka. 550,000. I don't hate the call. Yeah. A lot of pros are going to try to bluff there. Got to keep them honest. Do you have any more gum? If it's for you, no. So Boyka continuing to close the gap between him and Carlson. Well, action is now on Dmitry Yurasov, who is the short stack. He's got Ace King. And that means we're likely to see a shove. All in. There he goes. All in, wow. How much do you have? About one million? One million two. One two. All right. I haven't Yurasov is not amused. Dimitri, it's okay for poker to be fun. First one looks okay. Not the best, but the good. Um, did he just make it so he's gonna look at the same card twice? I call with my two kings of clubs. <laughs> King Queen. I call. call. Yes, yes. He calls, but he's dominated. Yeah, okay. Oh, f call. Yeah, good. Malinia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's a good hand. Domination nation. Hope Matz isn't too hard on himself. This is totally standard. Roman Koronov excited because Dmitry Yurasov is a three to one favorite to double up through the chip leader. Oh, dear. Hello. Han, he called in now, Ben Lunga, Kung Dom, do you not know? No, I'm not sure. No, Han, he called in in quite four. Definitely the kind of dudes that walk around naked at the gym. Well, after the flop, it's looking good for Dmitry. Just has to fade a queen on the turn and river. Yeah, come on back, Matt. Stuff's happening. The turn card. 
It's a queen, but it's the queen of diamonds. So Urasov has a ton of outs. Carlson ahead for now. One time. An ace or a diamond needed for Dmitry Urasov to survive. It's the six of clubs. All right, thank you. Urasov out in third. No way. No luck on the resuck. He cashes for nearly 193,000 euros. Second one, and you want him? Two. Yes. And we're heads up. Carlson versus Boyka. You're going to miss that flight. We began with three amateurs and three pros. Now, as this battle nears its end, only the comeback king and the valiant underdog remain. I have not so much experience in a serious heads up. I'm not very comfortable with it, no. He's obviously a very loose player, and he tries to play a lot of hands and put pressure on opponents. In a way, the good players are more predictable, because they play more normal and more accurate poker. I'm gonna do my best and if I win the title, that would be absolutely incredible. No, I can say that, oh, it doesn't matter if I come second, I'm just as happy, but winning the title would be <laughs> amazing, yeah. One of these two warriors will triumph and claim the PokerStars.com EPT Malta throne. Well, there's no actual throne, but there is a trophy. Why do you have to be so literal? A lot of support for Mats Carlson from all the locals here in Malta. Hey, Jackie. What's up? Meanwhile, joining Roman Koronev on Alexei Boyka's rail are Dmitry Urasov and Mikita Bodziakovsky, who came fifth in the high roller. Wow, these two are almost even. We got ourselves a game. Absolutely, with the blinds at 40-80 with a 10K ante. Carlson with King-7. He has the slight chip advantage going into this heads-up battle. Nothing like the chip lead he had before. He raises to 200,000, and Boyka defends with 7-4. He is dominated. Even though we know he's dominated, it's fine. 8-6-2. So Boyka flops a gut shot. Carlson's still ahead with King High. And he bets 300,000. Boyka calls. There's an argument for check raise in that board with nothing, but calling's way more standard. The turn card is a five. That is the straight for Boyka. Meanwhile, Carlson picks up a straight draw, a draw to a chop. Boyka is checked for a second time, and Carlson is going to bet a second time. Never a good spot to be in where you're drawing to get half the pot. 450,000. Now we're going to see the check raise. And he makes it chunky, 1.4 million. Folding here is the obvious move, but I don't think peeling is terrible. Folding probably makes a little more sense. You don't have to deal with any river decisions when you miss. Carlson lets it go. Boyka adds 960,000 to his stack. And that results in a switcheroo. Alexi Boyka now with the chip lead over Mats Carlson. Mats with 6 4. I call. Completes. Probably better to come in for a raise, but whatever. Boyka with King 9 raises to 300,000. And Carlson decides he's going to play a flop in position. He calls. Well, Boyka still has the best hand, king high, plus he has a gut shot. Nothing for Carlson. 
Boyk is not c-betting. This is what happens when there's an unknown quantity in the mix. A bluff from Carlson, 400,000. Taking a stab since there was no c-bet. Boyka calls. Not sure what he's doing with this line. Maybe just bluff catching with King High? Well, Boyka has paired his nine on the turn, and that means Carlson is now drawing dead. Got a great bluff catch in hand now. And Carlson is going to bluff again. 1.4 million in the middle. He bets 900,000. The only types of hands he's going to get to full with a bet like this are ace high type hands. And maybe not even those. Boyka calls. The river card is a five, which pairs the board. Well, if he was trying to get ace high type hands to fold, he would need to bet again here. It's been checked to him. All right. He waves the white flag. And Boyka wins at showdown. Why didn't you bluff? I didn't dare. The five is not too good. I mean, what can I, I mean, I don't have a queen. Fair enough. What, you, you call all in? I don't know. Ah, but they didn't look very convincing, <laughs> I have to say. Ah, that's a good chance. Well, Matt's lost a lot of chips in that pot. And his friend on the rail is starting to look a tad concerned with good reason, because Boyka has opened up a better than three to one chip advantage over Carlson. He is getting worked. He's first to speak here with Ace Four of Diamonds. He raises to 200K. Ace Jack for Boyka. Domination Nation, and we should be seeing a three bet. He re raises to 625K. I call. Well, that means we're going to the flop. Carlson seems so stressed out. I'm glad he didn't blast off there in the hopes of not having to make any post-flop decisions. The flop is queen, eight, deuce. Ace, jack, high, still the best hand. And no c-bet from Boyka. Again, I think he's trying to induce bluffs from Carlson. Carlson is going to bet. 550. Is it a value bet or a bluff? Yes. Boyka, an 80% favorite, calls. The turn card is a king, so Boyka picks up a gut shot and is still a commanding favorite. Carlson's got barely a pot size bet left behind. He checks behind. The river is a seven, so both players left with ace high. Boyka has the better ace and therefore has a lock on this hand. And he's checked for a third time. Matt's don't do anything crazy. Actually, something crazy might work. I'm all in. Carlson shoves the river. It's quite the maneuver, but is it a convincing line? 2.56 million into 2.37 million. It's polarizing for sure. It's not the kind of bet you'd expect from a guy as a bluff at this stage, but what can he have? What a spot for Boyka. If he decides Carlson's bluffing, Carlson could easily be bluffing with something like bottom pair, and Ace Jack still loses. If Boyka decides that Ace Jack High could be the best hand and calls, he's won the tournament. You can see it in his eyes. He's picturing himself winning the tournament right now. How much does Matt Carlson want to fold here? Yeah. 
He can see it. He can see the trophy lift. How is Carlson sitting there so comfortably? I would be freaking out. Waker putting the pieces of the puzzle together. It's a break now, yeah? Matt, don't speak! It says 15 minutes. It's 1.15, yeah. Shh, quiet! Oh, Boyka's the one who's stressed out. Boyka calls! Nice, nice call, he win. It's over. What do you have? Ace Jack? We have a winner! Oh, wow. What a call! Nice call. Yeah. Good call. Good game. Yeah. Good. Okay. Now, I missed Pedro the heads up. But, 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 wow. Ha! <laughs> All right, good call. With that amazing call, Alexi Boyka wins EPT Malta! <laughs> uh, I played it bad at uh, but I got, I got fed up. Oh, credit to Matt for making that move on the river there. Nice goal. It was tough. Crucially, Boyka made an outstanding call to defeat Matt Carlson. The Swede earns 262k for second. Boyka wins more than 355 grand and the EPT trophy. Alexi, you just won one of the last ever EPT titles. How are you feeling right now? I'm super excited. I didn't expect much when I was six stack at six marks table and I just don't have many words to say because it just feels amazing and crazy. That was plenty of words and we can see the smile on your face. I mean, that is one of the sickest calls we've ever seen. What was going through your mind on that hand and how did you eventually come to make that decision? I don't know. It seemed kind of semi-standard to me because he was not representing a strong hand and it's possible that he was tilting and uh, just tried to make a big bluff in the last hand. So I made this call. I said it's one of the sickest calls ever. He says it's just standard. Those are the words of a champion. Let's get a big round of applause for EPT 13 Malta champion, Alexi Boyka. Nice work, buddy. It's obviously my best result. It means a lot. It feels really incredible. Everything just started going my way. Good luck. Thank you. Good game. It feels really like it's uh, some kind of miracle. It feels absolutely incredible.